That's why I love going to Indonesia. I mean, yeah. you know, in Malaysia, I will never be a millionaire, Moitka. Yes. But in Indonesia, exactly. who is the Taiwan? That's true, that's true. <laughs> Welcome to the first episode of Small Talks. I'm Sarah. I'm Moika. So Moika, what's Small Talks all about? So Small Talks is just um, a casual conversation, you know, where we talk about different things, whether it's life, um, current, the, affairs. Yeah, current affairs, the latest trend, whatever that's going around in the world. And um, yeah. <laughs> So how did we come up with the new small talks? Maybe you can share a bit about that. Okay, so small talks started off with another name mm -hmm. because we wanted to incorporate the first letter of our names, right? Yeah, yeah. S and M. M. So it was at first it was say no more S and I M. I think it was say Wait, it? more, right? It was oh, say, say more. more, say say more. more. Yeah, yeah, say more. Wait, why did I say say no more? Say, yeah, say I more. Think say more. Say more. Then after that, we wanted something a bit more catchy and, and fun. fun. And since s'mores, S and M, so s'more talks. Uh, <laughs> I think we have to explain a bit the logo. Uh -huh. It looks like the s'more cookie mm -hmm. because you know s'more. Yeah. 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 The the um with the marshmallow. Yes. And the graham crackers. Have you ever had s'mores before, Moika? Yes. I've actually never tried s'mores in my life. Oh. I've always wanted to find out what it tastes like. It's good. Is it good? Is it easy to make? Uh, it gets sticky. It does? Because the marshmallow melts onto the stick. So you need to like squish it and then pull the marshmallow and sometimes it gets all over the place. But it's still nice. Because usually when you watch movies, right, especially mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to Western movies, mm -hmm. if you have campfires yeah, 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 or around yeah, yeah. Christmas, yeah, apparently yeah, yeah. s'more is a staple. Is it a dessert or what is it actually? You know, I don't know. I think, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it's just a fun thing, mm -hmm. I'm guessing. I guess it started off like a fun tradition, I guess. But is it an, an American tradition or where does it come from? Yeah. I have no idea, <laughs> but I would like to think it's American. I think it's probably American. Yeah, thing. yeah. Because it, I mean, all the American movies. They always feature s'mores. Yeah, I think. yeah, exactly. Uh, to give some context, mm -hmm. Moika is actually American, mm -hmm. but she is not an Angmo. No, <laughs> she's not an Angmo. She's an American mm -hmm. who is. Half Chinese and half Japanese, is yeah. that correct? Yeah, that's right. So what it was, what was it like growing up? Uh, you know, because you grew up in Sarawak, mm -mm -mm -mm. right? Yeah, so yeah, what yeah. is it like to be, technically you're a Sarawakian, but mm -hmm. your nationality is a American. So what it was like? What was it like it growing was, up? Actually, I never felt like, I mean, I always felt like um, Sarawakian mm -hmm. like, and Chinese. I never really felt like I was American or even Japanese. So it's more, um, I mean, because when I was younger, I, I wasn't able to get my permanent residence card mm -hmm. for quite a period of time. So because of that, I went to international school. Mm. So I was exposed to more international people rather than locals, locals. in a sense. Hence, I can't really speak. Basa or Basa Sarawa, things like that. But I'm learning. <laughs> yeah. So, but it was it was fun, and honestly, it just felt like I'm a Sarawakian. Like this is my mm -hmm. home. Like, I would call Kuching Sarawa, like even Malaysia, my home, because I grew up here, right? Yeah. Uh, have you ever thought about changing your nationality, giving away your American nationality for Malaysian? Mm -hmm. Have you thought about that? For sure. But um. Still thinking about it. We'll Why? We'll Why are you still thinking about it? Um, because uh, I don't know. I, I guess I guess because it's. I mean, I did think of it. I did mm -hmm. talk to my family about. It. I mean, we did have like, conversations, about but it. like, 
it's not a priority okay like to change because i'm able to stay here freely and mm -hmm. and able to work do all these things because you have a sarakin pr, PR right? yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. the red ic the red ic yeah yeah so it's it's i mean there is not not yet to see a need mm -hmm. like a it's, it's not a priority at the moment yeah but do you have any plans of moving back or relocating to america given that you know you mm -hmm. are american citizen and it's yeah. probably easy for you to uproot and move there do you have any plans uh maybe in the future but mm -hmm. not in the near future okay. yeah no, at least not for now but uh yeah so m maybe next time we'll see we'll just go with the flow the flow okay <laughs> yeah Cause I, I'm asking because you know um, mm. my parents are also of mixed marriage mm -hmm. in the sense that my dad is not a Malaysian mm -hmm. but my sister and I we were fortunate enough to be born and raised in Kuching so mm. we are Malaysian we are Sarawakian yeah. and you know I've been asked before do I have dual nationality which I don't okay and which I think um, I mean in some parts of the country mm -hmm. I mean not the country but some part of the world dual nationality is possible yeah. but I think in Malaysia you're not allowed to have dual yeah. citizenship you yeah. have to pick one yeah so that's why I'm quite curious uh, with regards to your situation because mm -hmm. like you said you're born you're not born in Sarawak per yeah. se but you know you grew up here so yeah. you have obviously an attachment to Sarawak mm -hmm. but yet somehow you haven't made the decision yeah to forego your American citizenship yeah yeah exactly I mean um I okay so but I did go to the US to study mm -hmm. for so what was it like is it easier is it cheaper for you yeah yeah, it's definitely easier. It's cheaper because I'm. Although I'm not a American, re, I'm not a resident mm -hmm. in any state, but an American citizen. Mm -hmm. There's actually a big difference in the tuition fees okay. between a resident and just a citizen mm -hmm. and an international student. So, like, at least from what we calculated, it was cheaper for me to go back to the US to study. So that's why we decided to go back. And I'm, well, I decided to go. Mm -hmm. Then um, from there, there were, from there it was interesting because I've never been to the US. That was my first time studying, ah. stepping foot. So it's like, you know, they always say like TSA and yes. like the big policemen. Yes. Yeah, it's real. It's scary. It's very scary. Going through immigration is like, your heart is like racing. Yeah, you're really, really racing. And, and these big guys are really carrying like guns and they're like, two meters tall maybe I don't know but to me they're just but huge but isn't it easier for you to go into America because mm -hmm. you're an American citizen or is yeah. there were there any challenges when you were going through immigration ah uh, no because no. I'm an American citizen I don't show like anything else just my passport mm. so to them I'm just American like just go through you know but going through the check like you have to put your bags yeah. and then check through the scan that is very scary you have to take off your shoes take off your socks I think something mm -hmm. like that you take like everything off your body and then like go through the check and they're really strict on with the canine dogs everywhere at the airport uh there were I think I saw like a few not a lot mm. but a few and there's some that are like really cute the canine dogs yeah I mean for <laughs> me I've had a scary experience uh, mm -hmm. with immigration uh, when I was visiting Australia, okay, like I had the uh, visa and everything. Mm. So, but when I, it was my turn to be at the counter, mm -hmm. uh, kind of before you step uh, disembark from the aircraft, they give you like this form where yeah, you have to yeah, fill yeah. in and declare whether you're bringing any firearms, any mm. drugs, anything like that. Yeah. So, I wasn't too sure whether I should take the drug and medication part because <laughs> I had. <laughs> my asthma inhaler with me ah, I mean you know it is a form of true. medication so I take that so when I take that apparently when I got to the counter they sort of like uh, segregated me with other oh. um, passengers from the flight who take similar box oh okay so they put me aside and then I had to wait I think around half an hour because they took my passport mm -hmm. They asked me to sit down and then they took my passport and then uh, there was this one officer, I'm mm -hmm. guessing, he came and he told me to wait and he took my passport to the back of the room 
and then it was quite nerve wracking in a sense that I was not sure. I mean, yeah. I think regardless if you're innocent or not, nah, yeah, when it yeah, comes yeah. to dealing with immigration, yes, uh, you airport, just you are scared, scared yeah. that yeah, like you might be carrying nothing that yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. forbidden, but it is a scary process regardless of which part of the world that you're going. Yes. Immigrations are freaking scary, scary yes. man. So. After that, he came back mm -hmm. and then uh, he told me to join this uh, line. It was like a different segment because if you were, uh, there was no problem with your passport or visa, mm -hmm. you just walk freely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me, I was set aside to this one particular line where mm -hmm. they had everyone with their carry on okay. standing in line and then you are facing that way. Okay. So, they, so you don't know what's happening at the back. So, oh, scary. Yeah, it is quite <laughs> scary. And then the next thing you know, uh, they made like an announcement. We uh -huh. are going to have canine dogs go through the line and sniff you. So if the dogs were, they, they did, the dogs don't bark or anything. Okay. They would just like sniff you. And then if you have something that's um, concerning uh -huh. or they, there's a smell that they can detect on you, uh -huh. the dog would just stand next to you. So in my head, I was like, oh my god, oh my god, I'm scared. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah, like you don't have anything yeah. weird on you. You didn't do anything yes. wrong before you left your country for this country. Yes. But it's a nerve-wracking situation. So when the dog came, okay, I was so grateful. I'm like, oh my god, thank the Lord. <laughs> the dog didn't stop next to me. I mean, I'm not scared of dogs mm -mm -mm. per se, but these dogs, they are trained. Yeah to catch bad guys, yeah, especially yeah, yeah. if you, you know, you yes. had in contact with drugs or narcotic substance. Yeah. So I was scared. And that was that. I, I was uh, able to oh, go boy. after that, okay. after that uh, canine inspection, which was really scary. Wow. And another scary experience that I had with immigration was mm -hmm. when I was in China okay. earlier this year okay. in Beijing. And that one, I didn't go through any specific or special mm -hmm. checks like mm -hmm. I did in Australia, mm -hmm. but there was a problem with my passport. In a sense, oh. you know when they, they scan your passport details, yeah. obviously your national ID comes up yeah. next to it, yeah. side by side. My problem is that, because my dad's name is really long, mm -hmm. so my, I have two names. Okay. My dad has three names. Oh, oh. Uh, okay. And as you know, for Muslims and Malays, right, mm -hmm. you have the bin yeah. for male mm -hmm. and binti for female. Mm -hmm. So my name was too long. So in my passport, uh, it just says that the passport bearer, my name is uh -huh. Sarah Hafizah only. Okay. So so when I was in China and they went through that system, mm -hmm. uh, I remember struggling to explain in Mandarin to oh, the officer no. how come my passport says one thing yeah. and then my national ID says another oh, thing. The one there. Yeah, because they were comparing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I know the passport. If you open your passport, the page can below is like mm. your, you know, your, your picture, mm -hmm. your details, yeah. and the top they put like a disclaimer. So mm. for my passport. It does say that uh, this passport barrier is also known as my full name, oh, including my, my dad's name. Oh, okay. So most of the time, uh, the officers, they don't really look at that. So sometimes my boarding pass, it says my full name. But oh, my passport oh, only says okay. my first and my second name. Oh. So it, they, there's, I always face this kind of situation yeah, where yeah, yeah. It, it gets quite nerve-wracking yeah, when yeah, you know yeah. the person in front of you or it took them less than 10 seconds okay good to yeah, go yeah, 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 so then when it was your turn it's like um they're like looking at your passport they look mm. at you and then sometimes they ask you to take out your national mm. id card mm -hmm. and okay then it tallies yeah. but you know that one is in malaysia context yeah but if you were to go overseas yeah. you don't necessarily need to show your national id yeah, yeah they yeah. only look at your passport yeah. because it's your international traveling documents yes. right so it, it's quite scary for me especially because when I booked my flight tickets, I like to put mm -hmm. my full name because that's my, oh, okay. you know, airline, they have like membership yes, yes. Uh, oh, program okay, where, okay, you can, uh, where you collect can collect coins. coins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if your boarding pass does not match to the name you registered uh -huh. in your account, uh -huh. obviously um, there'll be some confusion and you might not get the points oh, okay. that you're supposed to take. Yeah. You're supposed to get. So yeah, that's why it's, uh, when it comes to overseas traveling, I struggle a bit mm -hmm. in that sense because mm -hmm. of my name 
That's interesting. Yeah. That is very interesting. And it, the funny thing is, because I went to China with my sister, uh -huh. and uh, her passport is also similar to mine. Yeah. They only put her first and second name. Okay. They don't include my dad's name. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then at the disclosure part, they do mm -hmm. say that her full name is so mm -hmm. and so. Mm -hmm. But she didn't get held back. It was just me. So I'm like. <laughs> Well, that's weird. It's really weird. That's really weird. I don't know. Maybe my sister looks more innocent than me. Yeah, probably. You look but yeah, hey. <laughs> but yeah, it's very. It's always a scary experience for yeah. me when it comes to immigration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's I, I don't know. Maybe there's other people, people out there who face, who that. face the exactly. same thing. But for me, it's. It's quite nerve wracking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, even it, though you're traveling for leisure and all that. Yes, yes. It, it can be very scary. It's very scary. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, <sighs> we'll take a short break. Welcome back, guys. So, Moeka, where were we? Before the short commercial break, <laughs> we uh, were immigration, immigration, and, and yeah, travel. Okay, so Moika, maybe mm -hmm. you can share a bit. What is it like? Um, the process of mm -hmm. getting an American visa. I understand that mm -hmm. it's probably one of the world's hardest yes. visa to get, yes. but it's worth it in a sense that they'll give you like 10 yeah. years straight, right? Yeah. So maybe you can share about it. Mm -hmm. What is it like? I mean, it's not applicable for you because obviously yeah, yeah. you're American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think your mom, if yes. I'm mistaken, yes, you my mom. mentioned before. So yeah, yeah, can you share yeah. a bit about that? Uh, I When she brought me to the US, like when I was going to the US to study, mm -hmm. so we had to go through that process of getting visa for, for her. her, not for me. So <laughs> basically, we went to KL. I mean, we have to like book an appointment. And mm -hmm. even that is tough. Okay. Like the system is, sometimes it's a bit messy. It's like for online only? Yeah, is online. It? Like you have to go through, like you have to book online. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, I don't know if there is something... Okay, I don't know that time, but now... This was back in 20... The, um, 2018? 19? 2019? Before COVID. Before COVID, before okay. COVID, yeah. So it was... Even the booking part, trying to book it online was quite tough. And sometimes mm -hmm. I heard that people, they book it, like, at that slot. But when they go, they said they, they you don't have your you booking. Have yeah. Okay. Yeah, so... And, and the embassy is like very scary mm -hmm. because the walls are huge and when you go like before you can go in you have to go through a check mm -hmm. as if like at the airport, airport like okay. immigration type of thing so when um okay so basically my mom managed to get an appointment and everything mm -hmm. and then we went and then uh, my mom is always very nervous <laughs> going to the embassy like she's the one that is really like fearful mm -hmm. and she's like very stressed about it so once we went in and then we had to go through the check uh -huh. we basically have to put all our electronics everything behind oh so you cannot bring no it. you cannot bring okay. it and you, you because they don't allow you to take photos and, mm. and obviously they can't trust that you're not gonna yeah. take anything so you can't bring your phone you can't bring anything, anything. basically okay. just your documents what documents did you have to bring or your mom um, had to bring i think my mom she had to bring all my universities like like the accepted letters, acceptance letter oh, okay. and then um i think things like even her tax her i mean like the, the those documents like about financial, fi financial documents mm -hmm. basically so like a lot just a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and she just bring she just brought everything because it just in case yes so we went in and there were a lot of people a lot of specifically a lot of chinese from oh. mainland china oh well, mainland. Yeah, yeah yeah at that time okay. at the time there was okay. a lot of chinese so and there were a lot of also like international people so they don't really know how to speak english mm. so it's quite tough, tough for you know them. it's quite yes. and honestly i i feel bad and i i literally saw like i think almost 70 percent of the people that went before us mm -hmm. they were all rejected <gasps> just on the spot like okay where is your document why i mean they were asked very tough questions and then okay. and you don't know what they will ask because sometimes they're nice oh, sometimes yeah it's unpredictable sometimes, I would yeah, say yeah, it's very yeah, yeah. and so I think there was a Chinese student I think like sh the the son the son or the daughter is like going mm -hmm. to go there to study then the parents are trying to do the same thing okay so then um, they were asking questions like why are you going why do you need to go mm. where are you going to go just a lot of questions or even things like 
um, what is your family like? Where did your father come from? Like mm -hmm. very, just very odd, questions. random questions. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I guess I'm sure they they learn. You know, like like it's like a psychological thing I, I right? think so i mean i yeah. think you're trained yes to like evaluate yeah, people yeah, and their yeah, answers yeah. and i think most of them have years of experience so yes. they've met with exactly. all sorts of people yeah 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 so i think they probably a human lie detector <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah 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 it's true so how, what was the interview process like for your mom were you in the room together with yeah her? yeah it's not a room it's like a booth okay. like you just go through like a booth and you can hear everything okay so like you can hear people arguing and when people get a bit heated especially yeah. the other the immigrant the officer yeah they get heated and then they will literally just say like um sorry you, you're unable to get your visa please like leave, leave. <gasps> that and then you basically unless you're daring enough to ask him why to ask yeah, yeah but if not you better just walk out of that mm. room yeah but um so for my mom she actually thankfully she didn't have to go through such a tough process i think mm. it wasn't that tough it because, wasn't as brutal yeah, as yeah, yeah, the yeah because okay. i'm american ah, yeah so okay. they're she, i think they're asking more of like why am I American but she's not American mm. and then like you know all the all the family stuff yeah and then my mom just answered accordingly mm -hmm. and you just answer whatever like it's better not to to like think so much and just answer like Straight. truthfully honestly truthfully. yeah because if you were to say something just a little bit like you know you you hesitate or yeah. use a different word mm -hmm. vocabulary they may take that into account and like question you on that mm. yeah so thankfully it wasn't so tough and they just yeah gave my mom a 10-year visa just like after after going through the interview how how long did the interview take would you say half an hour uh, an hour i think it wasn't that long i think it was 15 minutes the waiting is longer mm. yeah but it's uh, about 15 minutes and then they just they just say okay like they'll process it and then they'll mm. send you send back your passport something like i mean or like you have they will to leave your passport i think they actually i don't really remember but it but should be the case because i remember the last time when my mom went to further her studies in uh -huh, the uk uh -huh. we went through a similar process right. at the uh, uk embassy mm. in kl as well yeah but i was really young then so uh -huh. i don't really remember Oh, okay. what it was like but I do remember the four of us going over there mm. and then we had to leave our passport and then they mailed it back to us because they had yeah. to like attach yeah, yeah. this the, one the page, page, uh, the page. Yeah, the, the yeah, yeah 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 but I think I don't remember because I whenever I go to the embassy is to renew my passport <laughs> and for me to renew my passport I need to leave my I, I need I can't leave KL until my passport is given to me the oh, new passport given yeah. to me so obviously yeah so <laughs> I don't know like I don't remember maybe they just print it out uh, I'm not sure but yeah, I know so it's like it's not just like a simple A4 page that they no. put in it's like an emboss yes kind of yes 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 kind it's of like stuck thing that, yeah. Onto, yeah like a proper one yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. a proper one yeah yeah so but I mean it was it's quite a interesting process because you see like how other people like yeah. how they how other people like whether or not they get mm. the visa so it's like well that's like very scary and some people really leave very angry really? like they start like i mean they talk among themselves mm. in their own language so like and and they're a bit loud yeah yeah but i think if i don't know if you've watched um, uh -huh. i don't think it's a documentary but it's uh -huh. like a tv show you know uh, regarding borders you know, Borders uh -huh. Enforcement, UK Borders. It's basically okay. uh, an immigration-centric kind of... Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's a documentary, uh -huh. but it's like a short, short episode oh, okay. of people wanting to enter certain countries and then they get questioned and all that. You haven't oh, seen... No, no, I've never seen... It, it's quite scary, actually, because, you know, uh, I think uh -huh. there's a few uh, Australian ones uh -huh. where they really scrutinize foreigners who mm. are coming in even yeah. though they have the visa yeah yeah because yeah, yeah, for yeah. the fear of they will come and work yes and yeah <laughs> so i think you know the visa applying process mm -hmm. and going through the immigration itself it is tough it's not scary. tough i think it's a scary yeah scary is scary, scary process, process yeah, to yeah, go yeah. through even yeah. though you're like a citizen yes. of that country or otherwise i mean when yeah, i return yeah. to malaysia mm -hmm. 
it's not as scary, I guess, because now because they have the e gates, so you just scan your ah, passport. Okay. So that's fine for me. Yeah. That one is okay. Yeah. It's the one where you have to physically the stand officer. there and look at the yes, officer. Yes, yes, yes. That is so scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true because for me, when I travel, when I was younger, now it's okay because I'm already above eighteen. Yeah. But actually, I struggle a lot. It, like going through immigration is very scary for me. Mm-hmm. For for Kuching to KL and KL to Kuching. Kuching. Yeah, because. For coaching to KL, sometimes they'll ask me like, why, why am I going there? Mm. Like, you know, things like that. And then my mom would need to help me to explain. answer and explain. Mm. But the, I think the scariest one is in KL because they're very strict. And sometimes, because at, at that time when I was younger, I for some, okay, so basically in coaching, yeah. when I'm flying to KL or something like that, I yeah. show my passport and my PR card, my PR card yes. yeah, to the immigration. Yes. But for some reason in KL, sometimes they ask me to show just my PR card and not my the passport. passport. Oh. So it gets it confusing. Gets confusing I yeah, think, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can never go through that, the E, E whatsoever, E gate, e gate. Yeah, 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 the E gate. I always have to go through the counter and then I experience one time this officer was really mean to me like he, he like shouted and scolded me and I didn't know what to do and my mom went through the e-gate mm-hmm. so so I was like um and my Malay is not that good yeah so, so I didn't understand what they were saying so then my mom like had to rush back and like try to, to s- talk to, to, talk to, to the, the officer. officer and then they were saying I think it's because I presented both my PR oh, and my passport okay. and he was basically giving me a lecture of why oh no how I shouldn't do that Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a bit odd. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a bit odd. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he's not having a good day. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. We don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe exactly. Don't but it's day. quite scary for me. So it's like for you, it's overseas, right? Overseas. For I me, mean, it's like you. I had that experience uh, both mm-hmm. in Australia and mm-hmm. China. The one that I told you, the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the officer was asking me why my name and yeah, 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 yeah. is him. That was me in the process of leaving the country. I'm mm-hmm. not entering the country. So for Australia, oh. it was the same thing as well. I wanted to leave to go back to Malaysia. Oh, they see. held me back for another good 15 to 20 minutes as That's well. That's interesting. Even though I'm leaving your country, yeah. I'm not staying. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I have the tourist visa for like a year because uh-huh. they, they give like one year mm-hmm. tourist visa. So mm-hmm. I can go in and out mm-hmm. as much as I like with yeah. that one year period. Yeah. But uh, it has shaken me a bit and <laughs> I didn't go back after oh, that. I yeah, within that duration. So that visa is, has expired. Oh. But yeah, I mean, you know, people want to leave your country. You shouldn't yeah, yeah. nice them that much. Right, right, right. <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, even if anything, you'll be deported back and you were already leaving. Yeah, I was right. leaving yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. it was just for a holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was just leaving. It's, it was less than two weeks, I think. Right. It was a short holiday. I mean, if you were to travel, obviously, obviously you want to make the most time out of it. Yeah, Especially yeah, if you yeah. go countries like uh, Australia, it's not that far. But I mean, uh-huh. America, yes. it'll take like, I don't know, hours and hours and yeah, hours yeah, yeah. in order for you to reach your destination of yes. course you're not going to stay for just a couple of days yeah yeah you can't you, you c- <laughs> they will question you as well right yeah, yeah, why yeah, are you yeah. why just staying a few days, a few yeah, days? Exactly. so at least it's like a two week stay mm-hmm. or you know 15 16 days yes. so that because you have to count the day you travel yeah. to go there and the day you travel back you yes. have to minus that from exactly. the actual and that's like four trip. days already yeah yeah Four days for America. I think it, going there is about two days. So two days. Two, two, so four. So what was the flight like for you? What route did you take? Because I understand mm-hmm. that Malaysia Airlines don't fly direct no. there, right? Yeah. So exactly. how, how, how did you go about to... I think uh, I went through... So one there was one time where I went through Kuching, KL. Mm. KL, Taiwan. Mm. Taiwan, Seattle. Oh, okay. Seattle, yeah, then Seattle to... Idaho, Idaho, where I studied, mm. yeah. And then there was another time um, I went through Japan. Coming back, I think I went through Japan. Japan. Yeah, like... Uh, Tokyo and... Tokyo? Tokyo, yeah, Tokyo. And mm. then Tokyo, KL, yeah. So... Then KL to Kuching again. Yeah, KL, yeah, yeah. So there's Kuching, KL, <laughs> KL, like Tokyo or Taiwan, and then Taiwan... Either San Francisco or mm. Seattle, and then Seattle to so Idaho. That's, four, that's like four, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's quite, uh, and, and Idaho, because um, I'm in a small town mm-hmm. called Moscow. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, uh, some, sometimes you need to go through uh, like Boise, which is the, the, the capital right. city oh, of Idaho. Okay. And then Moscow is a really, really tiny airport. It's probably oh. like the size of 
um, I don't know, like it's it's very small, maybe like three, four shop lots mm. combined. Yeah. Like just the ground floor. So it's more or less five different flights to get yes, to your destination. Basically, yeah. But I like long distance flight Moika. Yeah. It's it's quite nice. I, I, I quite enjoy I've been on one that is uh-huh. thirteen hours long. Mm. That was from Kuala Lumpur direct to London Heathrow. Oh. Uh, whenever I travel, I try to find flights that has direct yes. connections yes, because yes. I don't like the yes, I don't hours like, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, transiting because yeah. it's very tiring. Yes, exactly. I mean, if uh, if you're using the same airline, mm-hmm. then it's easier because you don't have to take your luggage. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. The Checks ones the where you have to switch self transfer yeah. your luggage, I think that one. Oh, is that's quite yeah, tiring. and it's scary. If your layover yes. is like a short period of time, mm. yeah. So that's why, like, when I was booking flights to the US or coming back, mm-hmm. it's always very tough because you need to find a layover time that is good enough to, like, in case of uh, delays yes. or in case you can't find the terminal, since like the airports are huge. Yes. So like, you have to get your baggage and everything. So it's. It's quite tough. <laughs> Nerve wracking to travel, to be honest. Yes, it is. But I enjoyed the adrenaline rush. Yes, exactly. From it. Yeah, same, same, same. And when you're at the destination, and then when you come, I don't know, it kind of feels fulfilling. Mm. Yeah. Like I don't know, I just like being on airplanes. The longer the oh, flight, okay. the better, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yes, exactly. So now we're gonna go on a break. So we're back from our break and since we're on the topic of traveling, immigration, things like that, Sarah, what is your, let's say, top five destinations for your, your bucket list? My bucket list, top, yeah, five. top five. I think, you know, this whole entire time we're talking about America, yeah. America is definitely somewhere mm. that I want to go. Okay. But I understand the process of getting the visa is quite hard, so I yeah. don't think that will be happening anytime soon. Mm. Plus, with the currency exchange and yeah, all yeah, that, yeah. it's quite pricey to go yes, there. So exactly. that one, not yet. Mm-hmm. The second one would be the Maldives. Oh, nice! I I always like going to places like that. You know, nature, like beach. beaches, yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I think I always go back and forth mm-hmm. to Bali quite a fair bit for mm-hmm. holiday. Okay. So Maldives is another place that I'm thinking of going yeah. but the challenge when it comes to Maldives is that the accommodation is quite pricey actually I oh, mean the flight okay. tickets if you were to book on Asia mm-hmm. or even Malaysia Airlines because mm-hmm. they recently introduced it as a new route right right it's actually quite pricey in the sense that the accommodation part the flight oh. tickets is not that expensive I mean for two person you can easily find economy class for mm-hmm. let's say 2000 so mm, it's okay. more or less one person 1000 yeah, going yeah and going back yeah but the accommodation is so expensive oh. because they mostly have villas oh, okay. and resorts resorts so, yeah the one yeah. The... I mean for me I don't really prefer mm-hmm. Airbnb or hostel or anything yeah, yeah, like yeah. that because you know you want privacy mm-hmm, mm-hmm. usually hostels you share with people and yeah. Airbnb you might not have the facilities that that's um, true hotels and resorts can offer yeah, you. So yeah, yeah. Maldives is a place that I really would love to go one mm-hmm. of these days. Mm-hmm. The third one would probably be, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I, I know, Kazakhstan. Oh, okay. So I was actually thinking of going to Almaty, Kazakhstan, uh-huh. because Asia has a direct oh, yeah, flight yeah, yeah, from yeah, yeah, KL yeah. to Almaty, Kazakhstan. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's such a, rare place for people to go on yeah. holiday but yeah. it's apparently cheaper yeah but the problem would be the communication wise because right. i have a friend you know uh, ilnara from raw kitchen oh so okay. she's from kazakhstan and they speak Ooh. russian there oh, my God. oh the <laughs> russian yeah they speak russian is that all they, sp- uh, they do that- speak english i guess okay, but okay. not as oh, widely as uh, Russian, yeah, yeah, yeah. so she uh, she told me that if I were to go there, uh-huh. I have to find like a proper guide and all oh, that okay. because all of the signage and all that is it, it's in all in Russian. Russian. Yeah. Oh, so interesting. It, it, it's uh, I think it's a place that I would visit for winter. 
Yeah. Yeah. For oh, snow yes, and all yes, that because yes. they have like skiing and yeah, 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 all yeah. that kind of place. But yeah. you know, language barrier wise, mm. uh, I'm quite, <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite uh, a bit unsure about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Unless yeah. maybe next time with Il Narag, Balik Kampung. Ah, yeah, you can I'll just follow. follow yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, she doesn't really Balik Kampung that much. Ah, okay. I think this is she went back, but oh. it's not as often. Oh. You know, you've met her at my house, I think. Did yeah. You? Uh, I don't think so. I think you came I, a bit late. Oh, but yeah, she has two kids and she married a local. Yeah, the, the yes. I can see the husband often. Yes, I think. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. So yeah, that's a shout out to Raw Kitchen if yeah. you want to sponsor our content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, please. And then that was the that one or the fourth one. That's the fourth. The fourth. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think the last one would be. I would love to go to Amsterdam mm -hmm. in the Netherlands, I guess. Ooh, okay. Because I feel like there's a lot of uh, historic places and yeah. museums and all that. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's something cool. that I probably enjoy. Yeah. Maybe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, European countries, I mean, if I were to go mm -hmm. to Europe, it'd mm -hmm. probably be like a two or three weeks kind of thing because yes, I want to go from one place to yeah, another yeah, and not yeah. just stay. Yeah, the one put because you have the Eurostar train. Yeah, and exactly. There are budget airlines that you know mm -hmm. it's easy to get around Europe. Yeah. Mm. What about you, Moika? What's your let's say top three countries? Okay, yeah, that you top visit? three. Okay, I would say number one, Japan. Because <laughs> I have never <laughs> been. <laughs> yes, I've never ever been to Japan. Mm. So that is seriously like my. Bucket, top, like bucket top, day. like that is where I would love to go for my honeymoon. Like, oh, like honeymoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's somewhere I really want to go. Mm -hmm. So, or or if possible, I would like to go like now. You know, like <laughs> yeah, if possible. But um, Japan mm -hmm. and then London. I've never oh, been to Europe UK. or UK. So that's really where I want to go. Because that was my, if if I wasn't an American, yeah. I would want to go to the UK to study. I think like, a lot of people want to yeah, go. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know the currency more yeah, like yeah, that's uh, not wrong. in euros is a bit yeah. crazy. The currency. I mean, yeah. for me, right, going traveling, you look at countries where our currency is yes. bigger <laughs> than this, so yeah, that yeah, you know yeah. you don't have to worry too much about yeah. spending. That's why I love going to Indonesia. I mean, yeah. you know, in Malaysia, I will never be a millionaire, Moika. Yes. But in Indonesia, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true <laughs> so yeah for me it's that kind of factors that I take into consideration yeah. okay so you have um, Japan you have the UK and yes. your third country? my third one I think it I on, okay honestly I think it's Bali because I see yes. you actually I never really thought about Bali until oh. I started working with like with you yeah. then after that I always see you going Bali and then the things you post and stuff like I'm like oh that is because I like beach yes. I like outdoor nature like, I like to get tan although mm, my mom yes. always gets mad at me you know that type of thing <laughs> yeah, yeah. so probably Bali and since it's it's not that it's not that far, far and so, it's not yeah. that expensive to yeah, go yeah, there yeah, yeah, exactly. and then uh, in terms of accommodation mm -hmm. in terms of food it's mm -hmm. really really cheap like you get your money's worth mm -hmm. and then you know if you look at TikTok and all that yeah, people yeah, always yeah. talk about oh going to value uh, and spending money like yeah. it's monopoly yeah, money know, but, right? you know but it's it's worth it I guess mm -hmm. and then you know we have the advantage of yeah. having a bigger currency yeah, than yeah, them yeah, exactly. so I think if you were to go with uh, let's say 3,000 pocket uh -huh. money for two people that's more than enough like three thousand ringgit. Three thousand ringgit. Oh. Two thousand ringgit is more or less, I think, fifteen juta rupiah. Oh, okay. That's why I say you, you can be a millionaire. Yeah, <laughs> you can be a millionaire when you go to Indonesia. Yep. Yes. So, but, uh, so, but, but um, going to Bali, right? I uh -huh. think uh, actually the first time I went to Bali was because okay. of work. Ah yes, ah, yes. That's I, uh, where I first <laughs> saw as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the first time I went to Bali is actually for work, and mm -hmm. you know we didn't really get to explore or enjoy as ah, much because okay. it was a working trip. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I came back the second time, mm -hmm. but it was quite a sad story, like The second time when I went back. Oh. But that one we keep it for the well, next, next okay. episode. Yeah, yeah. So stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> so yeah, second time I went to Bali, it was uh, we got to do a lot more. Mm -hmm. Even though there was something that was going on in life. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, Bali, definitely I would go back mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. But I just wish that there was a direct flight from Kuching itself. Oh, yeah. You see, Bali is like, if you look at the map, mm -hmm. Bali and Indonesia is like this side. Yep. 
So Kuching is probably in the center. Right. So when you want to go to Bali now, you uh-huh. have to fly to Kuala Lumpur. So you're going up and then you're going back <laughs> down. Yeah. yeah. That's, so uh, that's a bit... Yeah, like air connectivity. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, me, yeah, yeah. If we can have the direct. accessibility yeah. of having direct flights from Kuching to Bali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so much easier and yes. it will take less time. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. right now from Kuala Lumpur to go down to Bali, it's mm-hmm. like three hours plus. Mm. From Kuching to Bali, I think it's probably about two hours. Yeah, Or exactly. one hour and something. Because yeah, the yeah, distance yeah. is shorter and you don't have to waste time and money to yeah. go to KL. Yeah, exactly. But then again, KL is the hub. Yeah. So, yeah, that's something I'm looking forward to mm-hmm. in the future for like the airline companies. Have, yeah, 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 to yeah. have a hub so that we can have access to yes, all of this. Yes, 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 that's true. International destination. Oh, that will be so nice. Yeah, but Bali is worth it because <laughs> okay. actually the decision to go to Bali was comparing wanting to go to Singapore. Oh, okay. Okay, so when we were booking Singap- looking at Singapore, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, for a normal hotel, mm-hmm. uh, it's like 1,500 ringgit per night to stay at a normal hotel. You know, like... In Singapore? In Singapore. Can I say Ape Hotel? Uh, like an Ape Hotel. For the same amount of money, 1,005, you can stay three nights at a private villa with wow. a private pool. Wow, okay. So that was the thing that we had to consider yeah, the option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So money-wise, of mm-hmm. course, Indonesia is, you know, you mm-hmm. get more from your money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For Singapore, the currency yeah. is like times three. Yeah. So that was one of the reasons when we look at why we wanted to that one. Okay. Okay. So, Moeka, can you quickly wrap up our first episode? Okay, <laughs> so, um, I think we talked about many things. I mean, okay. Mostly, this is just the beginning yeah, yeah, of yeah. what uh, the following episodes will yes, be like. Yes. I mean, uh, Moeka and I will talk about anything. Anything, yeah, yeah. And yeah. hopefully it is of interest that we can get you guys yeah. to follow and like and subscribe to this yes, podcast. yes. So, Moika, what can they expect in the next episode? So, what can you expect? Well, maybe... <laughs> I mean, we could talk about things that are going on here. I mean, there's um, Parasukma coming yes, up. Yes, we have Parasukma yeah, and coming Sukma up. just ended. Yes. And then that was a... Hell of a ride. <laughs> yes, it was an um, interesting but, but fun experience, mm-hmm. honestly speaking. So, stay tuned and there's many, many more. I mean... We, we, we are going to make this a weekly thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, Moika and I will sit and chit chat. Yeah. And yeah, stay tuned for the second episode where we will share our experience of covering Sukma. Mm-hmm. And as you know, Sarah was the overall champion. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Thank Don't forget you. to like and subscribe. Ding ding. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>